Hello, this is Miss Nuke from By Barber College. Today, we're gonna to talk about chapter eight, dealing with electricity. This would be page 205 in the platinum or the uh, gray looking book, all right? So, not a lot of learning objectives in this chapter, it's just six. Uh, the first is to define electricity, then define the common electrical terms and measurements. The third learning objective is to describe electrical safety devices. Uh, the fourth is examine the modalities a barber might be able to utilize depending on state licensing uh, regulations. The fifth learning objective is to explain the electromagnetic spectrum visible spectrum of light and invisible light. The last learning objective number six is to identify devices used in light therapy treatments, okay? So why study basics of electricity? According to the textbook, it says barbers should study and have a thorough understanding of the basis of electricity because Barbers use and rely on a variety of, of electrical appliances and need to know how to use electricity and electrical devices safely. The next one says that barbers need to understand that special training is required to safely and correctly repair electrical tools and appliances such as clippers, trimmers or your outliners a lot of times it looks like a simple fix that we can do but you need to definitely seek out another professional in dealing with the repairing of your clippers uh outliners and things of that nature because you do not want to unmindfully electrocute yourself the next one says the barbers need to understand the importance of periodic inspections to minimize the risk of fires caused by faulty wiring or overloaded outlets. Okay, so understanding electricity. So electricity is not matter. Electricity is not matter. Um, it does not occupy space or have any mass. In fact, electricity can move through or across matter and space. Electricity is a form of energy that produces magnetic, chemical, or thermal effects when in motion. This energy is created by the flow of electrons between atoms. Okay, so we have an electrical current, a conductor, an insulator, and then you have a complete electrical circuit over here on page 207. Uh, then we have a did you know? So did you know that copper is a highly effective conductor used in um, electrical wiring and in electric motors? Copper is, that's a fun fact about copper. Uh, types of electric currents, we have a direct current, which is DC, and then we have an alternating current, which is AC. Then we have the converter, which is an apparatus that changes DC to AC. Uh, rectifier is an apparatus found within a power supply or adapter that converts AC to DC. Uh, then over on the next page, 208, it talks about electrical measurements. So an electric current flows through a wire in the same way that water flows through a hose. However, without pressure, neither electricity nor water would flow. So you have volts, V-O-L-T, which is V. It's the unit that measures electrical pressure which pushes the flow of electrons forward through a conductor, similar to the way water pressure pushes water uh, molecules through a hose. So tools and equipment that depend on electricity to function require different voltages. So a clipper or a blow dryer would not require the same amount of voltage or the same amount of power, right? Then we have amp or ampere. 
Uh, it's the standard unit for measuring the strength or rate of an electric current in a conductor. Just as a water hose must be able to expand as the amount of water flowing through it increases, so an electric wire must expand with an increase in the number of electrons, which will be amps. So a cord must be a heavy duty enough. So a lot of times uh, when we buy our clippers, they'll have maybe a two prong at the end of them. And it may not be so powerful. A lot of times what you can do is you can ump the power of it by adding a three prong on that cord of that clipper or that outliner and it will definitely um, boost the power of that clipper up and it will allow it to now go from being a standard clipper to a heavy duty clipper or heavy duty outliner, okay? By switching the, the prongs out. Uh, then the textbook talks about milliampere, it talks a little bit about ohms, um, safety devices. So we got safety devices that help to prevent serious electrical accidents from happening. You should become familiar with these devices and know where they are located. When you all purchase your shops or schools or when you all um, lease them out or rather you are a booth runner or a commissioner, Make sure that you know where the fuse box is. Um, something could happen. It could be a power outage or something. You would definitely need to know where the fuse box is located to be able to tackle that issue. Um, you also want to make sure that you know where the circuit breaker is as well. Then the textbook talks about grounding um, the GFI, which is ground fault interpreter. Um, it's the sense that uh, imbalances within an electric uh, circuit when it pops open. It means that it has sensed a ground fault or current leaking to ground. This device has surge protectors and must be installed properly to operate as intended. Otherwise, although the outlet may work, the protection function uh, it will be lost, and GFIs are required on all outlets located near or around sinks and water sources uh, in the barbershop. GFI, ground fault interpreter. Um, then you want to make sure that you read over the guidelines for safe uh, use of electrical equipment. Understand the terminology associated with electrotherapy. Uh, electrotherapy like uh, polarity is indicates the negative or the positive pole of an electric current. You want to be able to explain modalities, galvanic currents, disincrustation. So disincrustation will be used to facilitate deep core cleansing. Uh, during this process, galvanic current is used to create a chemical reaction that acts to emulsify the sebum and waste in the client's pores. Uh, you also want to know about iron trophosis, uh, the introduction of ions. It is the process of introducing water-soluble products into the skin. Both the positive and negative poles of the galvanic machine are used in this process. So ionic uh, penetration takes place in two ways. The two ways will be the catrophoresis and the anaporosis, all right? Then the textbook talks a little bit about microcurrent. And if you go over on page 213, Figure 812, it has an example of applied TELSA high frequency current within the facial, with the facial uh, electrode. Then um, it also talks about explaining light energy and light therapy, uh, the different wavelengths. And there's a, a chart of uh, figure 813 and also table 83. 
Uh, the textbook talks on 215 about the visible spectrum of light. So uh, it is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Visible light makes up 35% of natural sunlight. Okay, that's visible spectrum. Visible light makes up 35% of natural sunlight. Invisible light would be the ultraviolet light, infrared light. Okay, then a textbook talks about light therapy, lasers, light emitting diode. Um, then therapeutic lamps with an example of a therapeutic lamp on figure 816, page 217. All right, a couple of review questions about 10. And as far as the chapter glossary goes, it's about a page and a half. So this is Miss Nuke with by Barbara College talking about basics of electricity. Thank you. Have a great day.